Welcome to the next uh, next episode of Chem Honors, uh, Acid Bases Edition. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about the concepts of pH and pOH, the related concept, and see how those work and how they relate to the concentration of H3O plus and OH minus and relating everything back to something called KW, which is the water dissociation constant. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Uh, if you haven't already watched the rainbow demonstration video that it was posted along with this lesson, please go and watch that now. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You can skip the first uh, four minutes, which actually will, this will do if you click on this link or if you click on the link in the um, in the lesson. And uh, you can watch those first four minutes, but the last part of the video is really relating to what we're doing here. So universal indicators, this really cool indicator, an indicator we'll talk more about tomorrow. Um, basically, it's uh, something that changes color according to the pH, according to the chemistry of the solution it's in. And universal indicator, they came up with this really cool solution of four indicators that make a rainbow when we go from acidic through neutral to basic, Roy G. Biv. So it's pretty cool. Um, and as you saw in the video, hopefully, and as you see in the uh, picture I've got down below. When it's red, it's because it's acidic. So very acidic solutions are red. And these are going to correspond to high hydronium ion concentrations. And as we saw in our, in our notes before, we've got the hydrogen coming over to make the H3O+, which is our acid and chloride is the conjugate base as we're going to see in a couple of days the conjugate base uh, actually plays no role in the chemistry here now um when i started with the sodium carbonate solution i usually put a little uh, indicator in it to make it violet i don't believe she did in that video that's okay the same idea is going to hold true here uh it would be violet because it's basic and the basic nature comes about because there's some hydroxide in it. Now, there's no hydroxide in sodium carbonate. So where does that hydroxide come from? First of all, sodium hydroxide is a salt. It's got sodium and carbonate. So when it dissociates, when it dissolves in water, it forms the two sodium ions and the carbonate ion. Now, sodium ions are gonna be like chloride. They're not gonna participate in acid-base chemistry. But the carbonate does. Carbonate is a base. Obviously, it's a Bronsted base because there's no OH there. But what's going to happen is it's going to pull one of the protons off of our water here. So water is going to act as the acid. We're going to make hydrogen carbonate. And we're going to leave behind hydroxide. So when we then take that sodium carbonate and add it to HCl solution, then what's gonna happen is we end up neutralizing. And how acidic or basic the solution is in the test tube depends on how much sodium carbonate was put into that particular part of the test tube. So we can have our H3O plus and our HCO3 minus coming together. We've got the base. So the base is going to, um, sorry, the acid is going to give, going to give a proton to the base and we're going to make H2O, oop, not aqueous, sorry, H2O is liquid. And um, carbonic acid, and this carbonic acid actually doesn't stick around. Carbonic acid then decomposes into water and carbon dioxide. And you can actually see in the picture down below, you can see some bubbles forming and those bubbles are carbon dioxide. So let's start from the bottom because the bottom is where everything started. So when we put the sodium carbonate solution into the bottom, it started reacting with any acid that was down there. And the sodium carbonate quickly reacted with the acid to make neutral water. And then the excess sodium carbonate, so we had excess carbonate, uh, the carbonate 
stuck around and made a basic solution. So down here in the blue and violet region, the pH is going to be greater than 7. We'll get to pHs again in a few minutes. Because of that, the hydroxide concentration is very high. It's used up the hydronium ion concentration, and that concentration is very low. In the middle, we have the situation where we have uh, essentially the last reaction that we showed there. This last reaction up here, the green, where we now end up with neutral water. So we have the same number of moles of H3O plus and HCO3 two minus. The solution is neutral. I know you guys have studied neutral pHs before. And in this case, the H3O plus, when it is neutral, are equal. So the concentrations are going to be equal. Finally, coming up to the top. So as we come up, we're getting less and less sodium carbonate because it, it was so dense it stuck to the, sunk to the bottom. As we come up towards the top, we're getting less and less sodium carbonate. And near the top, we haven't affected any acid-base chemistry. We still have that excess hydronium ion that we started with the HCl. So that was from this up above. And this solution is acidic with a pH less than 7. So now the hydronium ion concentration is high. The hydroxide concentration is low. And hopefully you can see from this that there is a relationship between hydronium and hydroxide. And it is a, an inverse relationship as the concentration of one goes up, the other comes down. This comes about because of a very important equilibrium. And that equilibrium is the self-ionization of water. Water, when you put it into, well, you don't put it into a solution. When you've got a, a, a beaker of water or a glass of water, that water is actually undergoing a very small equilibrium where one water molecule is going to give up a hydrogen ion to another water molecule. And it's going to then form H3O plus. So that's our conjugate acid, and it's going to form hydroxide is our conjugate base. Now, this is defined by an equilibrium, Kw, the water dissociation constant. This is a constant at 25 degrees Celsius. We're always going to assume that it's at 25 degrees Celsius until we get a little bit more complicated, um, which we won't do in this class. But you can see from uh, your knowledge of equilibrium that because we've got the liquids in our reactants, they don't show up in the equilibrium concentration. And it turns out, or equilibrium expression, that the equilibrium expression is just going to be the concentration of the hydroxide, uh, hydronium times the concentration of the hydroxide. And this has a value at 25 degrees Celsius of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Hold on to that number for a few moments. We'll get back to that in just a moment. What I want to show to you is this. If you add acid, adding acid is going to increase the concentration of the hydronium ion concentration. If that increases the hydronium ion concentration, basically what's going to go has happened is Q is going to increase. Q is going to be too high. So that means we have to run the reaction to the left. When the reaction runs to the left, it uses up both reactants. We have an excess of hydronium ion. We didn't have an excess of hydroxide. And so the hydroxide ion concentration is going to decrease. So as one goes up, the other goes down. And you can see that inverse relationship in the fact that they're multiplied together on the same side of the equal sign. When we add base, then we're deliberately increasing the hydroxide concentration. As you increase the hydroxide ion concentration, again, Q gets to be too big. The reaction has to run in the reverse direction, and it has to use up both reactants. It's going to use up a little bit, but not a lot of hydroxide but it will use up a lot of hydronium ion. And so the hydronium ion concentration is going to decrease. And this is what drives acid-base chemistry. If solution is neutral, then look what's going to happen up here. Let's call each of these X. So this is X times X or X squared. 
Why are they the same? Because of these, because of stoichiometry up above. If we look at the stoichiometry up above, then we can see that we form one hydronium, one hydroxide, and so we make essentially X, which right now we don't know what it is. That's why we're gonna call it X. We're gonna make X of each one. X squared is equal to one times, oh, let me do sig figs, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Take the square root of both sides to get X, square root of X, square root of one times 10 to the minus 14, and that tells us that X, which is the concentration of each one, is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven molar. Now that number seven should be sticking, sticking out like a sore thumb. You should be thinking about something that you know about that number seven and acid base chemistry because that's where that number is going to come from. Now before we get to that number, let's talk about just calculating hydroxide and hydronium ion concentrations given certain concentrations of the other. So you should be able to calculate one given the other. And you're going to do that by rearranging the uh, rearranging the equation. So if I give you the hydronium ion concentration, then you're going to rearrange to get that the hydroxide ion concentration. Oh, by the way, that KW expression, I think I said this is on your reference chart, is equal to KW which is one times 10 to the minus 14, divided by the concentration of the H3O plus. So that's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Remember equilibrium constants, we don't have units. The concentration of the hydronium ion was 0 0.1. Again, we don't need to put the units in there. And we can do this in our head, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.1. So that's going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus, uh, 10 to the, um, minus 13 molar. And because the concentration of the hydroxide is less than the concentration of base, uh, I'm sorry, of, uh, less than the concentration of hydronium ion. So let's write it the other way. H3O plus is greater than the concentration of the hydroxide. And so that's going to be an acidic solution. In B, now I'm gonna give you the hydronium ion, uh, hydroxide ion concentration. So the hydronium ion is gonna be Kw divided by hydroxide concentration or 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.0001, which is 10 to the minus four. So the hydronium ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10, let's make that look like a zero. And because the hydron hydronium ion concentration is less than the hydroxide ion concentration, that means that this is a basic solution. Up above, we have hydronium ion, 8.9 times 10 to the minus 14, so hydroxide concentration and 10 to the minus nine, sorry, is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 8.9 times 10 to the minus nine. Not quite so easy now, got to get out your calculator. And when you do that, uh, to two sig figs, we get 1.1 times 10 to the minus, um, minus six molar. And hydroxide concentration is larger, so this is a basic solution. And finally, KOH. Now, KOH is a strong base and it dissociates 100%. So the concentration of the hydroxide is equal to 0 0.025 molar. That's important to note. That happens the same thing with strong acids. So strong bases are going to give us a one-to-one -one correspondence. And so the hydronium ion concentration, I'll spare you the math and the setup for now, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 13. And this is quite definitely a basic solution because the hydronium ion, hydroxide ion concentration is larger. So that kind of math is pretty straightforward, I hope. Let's turn the page over and see how this leads us into the concept of and calculations using pH. So what does pH mean? It's not just a random number. It's not just 
a number between one and 14. In fact, it can go as it can go lower than one, it can go higher than 14. I'll show you in a moment. So hydron the pH roughly stands for the power of hydronium or hydrogen, power of hydrogen or power of hydronium. And when they say power, a power is the exponent. So we need to know what that exponent is. And so in order to do the calculation, we're going to take the logarithm. The pH is the logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration, but we need a negative logarithm. The reason for that is because of water chemistry, most of the exponents are going to be negative. And so all the numbers would be negative. So we just turn it around and make it positive to make it easy to work with. To go the reverse direction, so the reverse function, the inverse function for negative log of H3O plus to get the H3O plus concentration, if you know the pH, just take 10 raised to the power of the negative pH. And we'll do some practicing with that in a moment. Now, let's take a look at this scale on the right, just to make sure we're, we're on the same page here. On the left, we have an acidic solution. The acidic solution, oh, of course, and basic solution are broken right down the line at hydrogen concentration and hydronium uh, hydroxide concentration of 10 to the minus seven. As we'll see in a moment, that gives us a pH of seven. We'll see how that works um, because we have one example for that down below. To the left, increasing acidity as the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration is increasing. 10 to the zero is one molar. So at one molar concentration, we'll have a pH of zero. Can you have concentrations of hydronium ion stronger than one molar? Absolutely. My bottles of concentrated acid go up to 16 or 18 molar. At those concentrations, you would actually have negative pHs. So, so say 15 molar would have a pH of about negative 1.5. So you can have negative pHs. It's just that the normal range that we see goes between 0 and 14. You can also go out so you can have a lot lower concentrations of hydronium ion, and you can have out to, say, 15 plus as your pH. So pHs can get higher as well. So don't feel like you have to be stuck. If you get a number that's less than 0 or a number that's greater than, 15, greater than 14, you should be okay. So let's take a look at how to do some calculations with this. First, I want to just make a little mention here. Don't want to stress about it too much. Oh, I know sig figs, that big stressor for you. Relax. It can be a little tricky. I'm going to show you an easy trick to deal with these. Because of the way it works, when you take the pH, when you take the log, the um, the integer part actually is irrelevant to you. And I, I'll prove that to you when we get together in class if somebody wants to, wants to see it. I don't want to do it here. And the only thing that's important as far as sig figs goes is the decimal. So the number of sig figs that you have in your concentration is going to be equal to the number of decimal places in the pH value. And I'll model that as we go through. Now, for any concentration H3O plus equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus X, whatever that X is, the pH is going to equal X.00. It's just going to equal that exponent. And again, you can try this out on your calculator to be sure, but I want you to know this because it's going to help you to speed things up when you get on the on the test. So if I have a hydronium ion concentration of 10 to the minus 3, that 3 becomes my exponent. So negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3, you can plug that in if you want to, is going to give you 3.00. So we're going to take that 3 and it's going to become the pH. Notice two sig figs in our incoming number, two decimal points, and this pH is less than seven, so it's acidic. 
In letter B, we've got our H3O plus concentration, 10 to the minus 7. You know what? We can skip by here. 10 to the minus 7, bring that 7 down. 7, 2 sig figs, 0 0.00. And this is the only time we're going to have neutral solution, at least at 25 degrees C. Again, this is all at 25 degrees C. I don't think I'm going to try to trick you about other other concentrate or other other temperatures. Um, in letter C, you are going to have to plug this into your calculator because it's not 1.0. So 6.5 times 10 to the minus 11. Now let's do a little reasonable check here, though. This is between 10 to the minus 11 and 10 to the minus 10. So the pH should be between 10 and 11. It should be in that range because that's where your concentration is. So check to make sure that you get this kind of a number when you do your logarithm. So take the negative log of that. And in fact, we do get 10.19 as the pH, again, two sig figs, and 10.19 pH is greater than seven. So that's a basic solution. Going the other direction, pH of 11. So again, going the other direction is going to be sort of similar. If we have the x, the um, pH is equal to some basic integer, x.00, then the hydronium ion concentration is going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative x. It's just going to be that simple. So 10 pH of 11 gives us 10 to the negative 11.00, 10 to the negative 11.00. Let's write that in valid scientific notation, 10 to the minus 11. And again, the pH is greater than 7. The hydronium ion concentration is less than 10 to the minus 7. So that's a basic solution. pH of 3.87, we're going to do the same thing. 10 to the negative 3.87. Now, people might be tempted to leave that, but that number doesn't really mean anything to me. And let's think about this for a minute. 10 to the minus 3.87, so that's between negative 3 and negative 4. And so our exponent is either going to be a negative 3 or a negative 4. I think it's going to be a negative 4. Uh, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4. Oh, let's put molar. You might have caught me on that. 10 to the minus 4 molar. pH is less than 7, so it's acidic. And finally, 8.40 as our pH, 10 to the minus 8.40. We're going to, so this is between 8 and 9 is where the pH is. So our exponent, I guess the way the math works out, it's always going to take the, the bigger or more negative number, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 9, pH is greater than 7. Oops, so, sorry, circled the wrong B. And so we're basic solution. So hopefully you understand the concept of pH. And again, up above anything with H plus concentration greater than 10 to the minus 7, or pH of less than 7 is acidic, anything on the other side is going to be basic. Now, you may have said, what's this POH that he's talking about? I've never heard of POH before. But now that you know what pH is, it should follow for you what POH is. Just like pH is the power of hydrogen or hydronium concentration, POH is the power of the hydroxide concentration. And so pH is equal to negative log of the hydroxide concentration. Now, there's another very important relationship for us, and this relationship comes about from both the definition of pH and pOH and also our Kw. So I should have had Kw is equal to. So 10 to the uh, um, H3O plus concentration times OH concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Taking the negative log of both sides, our logarithm rules say that when we multiply things together, we get to add the logs. So we're adding the log and a negative log of H3O plus concentration is pH, negative log of OH concentration is pOH. The negative log of 10 to the minus 14 is 14. And we can make, make use of this relationship. And if we look up above, you can see 
Ah, let's put in, down below the OH concentration, let's put in what the pOH is. Negative 14, the power of that, that's 14. Negative 10, the power of that is 10. Negative 7, we've got 7. Negative 4, the power of that is 4. 0, the power of that is 0. And notice all the way along, OH, uh, pOH and pH is equal to 14. So this is going to be something that's going to help you solving the kinds of problems we're going to give you down below. Here's a summary of those problems. I'm not going to go through cal um, specific calculations involving pOH because pOH, the calculations are going to be exactly the same as what we just did for pH. But this is a uh, relationship summary we have here. And on your worksheet, you're going to see that there's a nice way of, of um, showing this relationship in a box and that these equations are going to help us to get from the H3O plus concentration or the OH minus concentration or the pH or the pH and find the other three. Given the fact that this is water chemistry, we always know what the, PK, that the, what the KW is. We will always be able to find three of them given the one that's missing, or given one, find the three that are missing, given one. <coughs> so, in number four, if we calculate the pH and pOH of the following solutions, I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to do it. There's always two ways to go about this. <coughs> HI is a strong acid, which means that the H3O plus concentration is equal to the concentration of the HI. And so that equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 molar, which means that the pH is equal to just the negative log of that because that's because we have 1.0, the pH is going to equal 4.00. The pOH is going to equal 14.00 minus the pH 4.00 and 1.0, oh, sorry, uh, 10, point zero, zero, keeping those sig figs. Now, you could have gone from the pH and then from the H plus concentration. You could have then gone to the OH minus concentration. So from here, we could have gone to the OH minus concentration and then take the negative log to get to the um, <clears throat> to get to the pOH. Either way should work for you. In letter B, I've got a little bit of a trick for you. MgOH is a, is a relatively strong base and it dissociates 100%. But the one thing you've got to worry about is stoichiometry. That one MgOH2 produces two OH concentration, two OHs. So the hydroxide concentration here is equal to two times the concentration that I told you of the MgOH2. And so that's going to equal 4.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. All right, so take the negative log of that to get the pOH, negative log uh, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar equals 4.32. And again, you could go from here, you could go to calculating the H plus concentration, and then from the H plus concentration, you could get the pH, or the easier way of doing it, again, go for the easy way, pH is equal to 14.00 minus 4.32 or 9.68. Okay, so we're going to fill in the table number five, and that's going to be it for our lesson today. Um, nice one in number one, H3O plus concentration, one times 10 to the minus nine. OH, uh, you know what? Let's do the pH first. It'll be easier. The pH is 9.00. The pOH is 14 minus 9 is 5.00. The OH concentration is 10 to the minus 5.00 or 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5. And because the 
um, pH is greater than 7, this is going to be a basic solution. Now let's start from the pOH. pOH is 2. The pH is going to be 12.0. Um, I don't know why I gave, you know what, let's put another sig fig in there. 2.00, 12.00. I don't like one sig fig on these things. Uh, pH of 12 gives us a OH3O plus concentration, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 12 molar. I didn't put my units up here in the hydroxide. Hydroxide concentration, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. And again, pH is greater than 7. Let's put that in there. The hydronium ion concentration is less, and so that's a basic solution. A uh, little trickier now, OH concentration. Let's get the pOH first. The pOH take the negative log, and that's going to give us 7.35. Subtract that from 14, gives us 6.65 for the pH. We have the OH concentration. The H3O plus concentration is 10 to the negative 6.65 or 2.2 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. Notice that's just barely greater than the concentration of the hydroxide. The pH is just a little bit under 7, but that's still an acidic solution. Finally, starting with a pH of 10.76, we can subtract that from 14 to get 3.24 for the P, uh, pOH, and then we can use that, use the 10.76 over here. Let's bring that over here, 10 to the negative 10.76, and that's going to equal 1.7 times 10 to the minus 11. You know what, that's getting a little sloppy. Let me try 1.7 times 10 to the minus 11 molar. The hydro, hydro, uh, hydroxide concentration, 10 to the negative 3.24, and that's going to equal 5.8 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. The hydroxide concentration is greater, pH is greater than 7, and so we have a basic solution. All right, I hope that uh, you understand this all. Go to it on the worksheet, and I will see you next time in class.